Well, hey everyone, it's the middle of March and the weather is starting to lighten up here in southern New Hampshire and warm up and we're going to get in the, we're in the 50s today, which is pretty good. And so it's time to get started on our projects for this spring for our new Winnebago Voyage fifth wheel. And I've got quite a few things lined up, some stuff with the water system, which we'll talk about in another video, but this morning we're going to get started on batteries and power and so this spring we're going to do a big project that includes a progressive surge protector on our incoming AC power we're going to upgrade from our single lead acid battery to two 170 amp hour lithium ion batteries from bigbatteries.com we're going to add a, a Renogy solar kit 400 watts of solar on the roof and an MPPT controller down below and then all the associated breakers and switches and isolators and fuses and all that stuff. One of the things I really liked about the Voyage when we bought it is that on most fifth wheels this size you see front bedroom, rear living room kind of set up. You know it's a 35 footer, models of 3134 RL. And what most manufacturers do is they'll you have this small compartment on the front before you pass through. And in here they'll put in a propane tank. And then on the other side will be the same thing, a propane tank. And then your batteries usually go in the front compartment somewhere. Well, what Winnebago did, which is super smart, is in this compartment on the other side are both propane tanks in one compartment. So this side became... The battery compartment and when you get it from the factory there was sitting right there on these two metal things a battery box this this battery box actually I had one from a dealer 27 interstate lead acid battery and it sat right here on these and this whole compartment was open because you need that for lead acid batteries and then of course a vent that went outside from the battery box. Well, what's really cool about this is that leaves a pretty big compartment to do different stuff. And so my plan is to get both lithium batteries in this compartment and an inverter and an MPT, MPPT solar charge controller and all the associated switches and stuff are all gonna fit in this compartment. So I don't give up any storage space. I don't give any, up any pass-through space. I don't have to dig underneath my stairs into the basement. It's all going to be right in here. Well, that's the plan. So we're going to start by putting in a floor, a wooden floor here to hold. You know, I'm terrible at this camera stuff. A floor to hold the batteries. And then we're also going to put wood on the metal so that we have a good mounting place for the inverter and the rest of the electronics. And so I'll be taking you along on this journey. It's probably going to be a little choppy because I'm not going to get it all done in one day. But I want to take you along and show you what a typical solar and lithium battery upgrade looks like on a fifth wheel. All right. Let's get started. All right, a quick update on progress. We've got a wooden floor put in the compartment now. It covers the whole thing, seals up what was previously opened. I'm more concerned about lithium being too cold and the inverter being too hot at this point, but I do have a couple of spots where I can put fans in to get fresh air in and out of here in the summertime if I need to. Also, a backer mounting board on the back wall that's where the inverter and the battery disconnect and the inverter disconnect are going to go so two big battery 170 amp hour batteries going on the floor the inverter i mean the um uh, sorry solar mppt controller is going to mount on this wall along with its breaker and all right, that's where we are so far. I'll check back in in a while when we have more progress. 
So here are the batteries that we're using for this install. They're from BigBattery.com. They're uh, lithium batteries, and they're 170 amp hours each. They have really good numbers from the BMS in terms of discharge and charge. They come with a 300 amp protective fuse built into them. The BMS is actually in this top portion, and the, and the cells are in here this way so that the posts and the cells are actually on this side. And then for connections, they do something a little different, which I really like, is they use these Anderson connectors, 175 amp Anderson connectors to connect it. So it makes it very simple to take the battery in and out of the system if you need to. And you've also got a sort of guaranteed good connection when it's in place. Let me show you what I did in the compartment. I showed you that I had the wood floor put in. We've gone one step further and sort of boxed in where the batteries are going to go. There'll be one more piece on this end. And I also put down a rubber mat, just an eighth inch rubber mat, just to cushion them a little bit. I think, you know, it's not real super necessary, but it just makes me feel better. So I'm going to put a rubber mat in the bottom from to sit on and also a piece of it in between the batteries once they're in place. Now, I'm going to install these batteries sort of laying on their side, if you can imagine that. Let's go back over here. They're going to be in the compartment with this side down. So this side will be facing up, and that orients the Anderson connectors correctly to go into the system. And uh, because the cells, you know, you can really mount them in any orientation you want, but because the cells are installed the way they are, if we lay them down on this side, the cells are actually standing. Well, I told you I wasn't a professional videographer, and uh, there's our first clue that that is so. Uh, that last video clip got cut off just a little bit. So just to finish the thought, the batteries really can be oriented in any way you want, but when you lay them down on their back like that, it orients the Anderson connector to the back. It puts the on-off switch and the voltmeter on the top, and also it orients the cells so that the posts of the cells are facing up, which would seem to be their most natural orientation. Uh, so again, you can sort of put them any way you want, but it made sense for my installation to what looks like laying them down on their back, but actually orients the cells up and puts the Anderson connector in the right spot. All right, let's move on to the next clip. So I thought it might be helpful to show you a diagram of what it's all going to look like when we're done. And so I made this one up just to help me as much as anything, but maybe to help you too. So let's sort of follow a path here. Let's start with the AC. The, the Voyage has a 50 amp service, so that's 220 volt legs. And that's going to go through a progressive EMS surge protector. And then that's going to have a remote that's going to get mounted inside the camper. And then from there, we'll go to the GoPower 3000 watt IC pure sine wave inverter charger transfer switch all in one. And from there, the AC will go to the inside AC distribution panel. So that's the AC side. I should say the GoPower also is going to have a remote, which will be inside in the panel where our other displays are. So on the DC side, the two big battery lithium iron phosphate batteries, 170 amp hours each, so 340 total. I did something a little different than most people do here. I'm putting in a battery disconnect and selector switch so that you could choose to run on battery one or battery two or both at the same time as you wish, and it also allows you to turn the whole thing off. Uh, between that and the Anderson connectors, I think it makes it really simple to put a battery in or out as necessary uh, while you're working on it or doing something or another, I don't know. So then we come out of the battery selector switch and it's going to go two ways. This way to another disconnect switch, which is just for the inverter. And that'll go through a 400 amp fuse that came with the inverter. It's the size that GoPower recommends. And then it'll go from there, the DC plus into the inverter. Uh, the other side coming out of the battery disconnect switch will go to the positive bus bar. And that will also, that feeds everything in the camper. There's a series of breakers and fuses there that's in that battery compartment. I'll show you later. And also the input from the Rover MPPT 
controller for the solar panels, the output of that will go through a 40 amp fuse and also connect to that positive bus bar. On the negative side, the two batteries will come to a battery monitor shunt, which again will have, <coughs> excuse me, have a remote battery monitor inside the camper. And then from there, it just simply connects to the negative bus bar, which is already in the battery compartment, which I will show you. And also the Rover uh, solar controller, charge controller, will also connect to that negative bus bar directly across from the one that comes from the shunt to get those two as close as possible on that bus bar. So that's that part of the system. And then if you wander over this way, we'll eventually get to the solar panels for... 100 watt panels which are going to go on the roof of the camper. They're going to be connected in series. Uh, that's the way that uh, Renogy suggests this kit get used. And then there'll be a 10 amp inline fuse which is also up in the roof. Come down through the solar prep which is in our camper when we bought it. Uh, and then I'm going to have a solar disconnect which is a tool pole breaker. It's important when you get these that you not only get the amperage right but you get the DC voltage right. A lot of breakers that you might use in this situation are actually not rated for the voltage that the panels can produce DC and that can cause you problems later on. So make sure you get a breaker rated for the correct amount of uh, DC volts that are going to be coming into it. So there's a solar disconnect and then that'll go into the rover and then come out and go over to the system. The rover comes with a Bluetooth transmitter which will have connected and I'll stick that somewhere under there so that I can monitor what's going on with the rover at all times if I want. I'm hoping that I'm mostly going to ignore all of this once I get it put in but I'm going to have all these ways to keep track of it if I want to. So there's sort of an overview of the system and let me take you over and show you what it looks like now that the batteries are in place. So the two batteries are in and uh, they're supported on all sides. And then behind, there's that positive battery bus bar. And between the tops and bottoms of those, those are circuit breakers. Uh, so it feeds in across the top bus bar and then goes out across the bottom, mostly. There's one exception, but that has an inline fuse after it. And then this piece of cardboard is the space that the inverter charger is going to take up. And then we have the space to mount those two disconnects and the fuse for the inverter and I think that's all going to fit fine and then later when we get to do the solar side the charge controller is going to fit on this wall over here all right let's see what happens next well I think this is going to be it for day one of the work on the voyage to updo the DC power and AC power systems let me show you what I got done so both of the batteries are set in place and they've got wood surrounding them and then rubber mat under them and then a rubber mat in between them. And then the Anderson connectors come out at the bottom and come up to this switch which is the battery disconnect switch and you can see you can choose battery one, battery two or both. And then it comes out of that selector switch and a six gauge wire comes over to the DC positive bus bar and feeds all of that. Underneath those red rubber pieces are actually circuit breakers for the different DC circuits. And then it also comes out of that selector switch and goes over to this isolation switch for the inverter. So we can turn, we can Turn the power off or on to the inverter without disturbing the rest of the electrical system. Above that is installed the 400 amp fuse that will power to this to go with your inverter, and the inverter is going to go right here. A little late in the day to start that, I think, so I'm going to wait for another day. And on the DC side, the power comes from the batteries, the Anderson connectors, and goes to uh, my shunt which is going to give me a reading of state of battery charge inside and then the large 4 rod cable comes off of that and goes over will connect to the inverter right now it's hanging free 
and then a six gauge wire comes off of that and goes to the DC negative bus bar that feeds all the power to the negative side and so both batteries power up and you can turn on the power here for one or the other or both and it feeds the camper and I've been putting slides in and out and awnings in and out and stuff just to sort of test and going around with my meter and checking everywhere and it's, this all seems like it works fine so next time we'll I don't know we're either going to go solar and mount the charge controller or we may go inverter next I don't know just tune in to see